The following program is sponsored by Seattle Open Door Church. Seattle Open Door Church is committed to loving God, loving people, and loving life. Our doors are open to whomever. No masks required. Seattle Open Door Church is located in downtown Burien next to the Southwest Courthouse. Host for There is Hope is Richard Dover, the senior pastor of Seattle Open Door Church in Burien. Richard Dover, you see your pastor Seattle Open Door Church. This is There's Hope TV. And uh, today we're interviewing Dennis Marcelano that's going to be speaking. He's going to be talking about being addiction free forever. Just finished up some seminars. Uh, we're going to be talking about the 12 steps specifically today. But Dennis, welcome to the show. Thank you. Michael. Why don't you share some with the audience a little bit why you're able to talk about addiction free forever? Do you have any experience in addiction and do you have any experience in, in victory? Because a lot of people have experience in addiction but not the victory. 18 years addicted, uh, 34 years victory. So twice as much in victory than in addiction. Kind of, yeah. So you probably know a little bit about how to walk in victory. Right. And so talk a little bit about the addiction free forever. We're going to do a whole entire show on it, but why don't you just give kind of a, a minute or two preview of kind of your concept when it comes to being addiction free. Um, sure. Well, you know, I have an engineering background, and so this is a, a thing. You know, this body and our feelings and our mind and... All that is a design thing. So um, there's a, a line in a song that says, wonderful is what you feel in you when you do the things you're made to do. So the idea is, how are we made? And uh, you know, when we're in uh, harmony with that, good feelings, peace. No, no, whereas what happens is uh, uh, we, we will be guided if we get off the track. And see, so that guide is no And the guy, we can't trust that guy. Yeah. Well, we can't? We can't. If, we're, if we get off track, what guides us is something that... Oh, what guide us off track, yeah. yeah. No, I'm, I'm talking about like a, a relationship with God right here. And um, like guilt and shame and all those things that are just very uncomfortable, which God really uses the designer um, to get us back on track. And you think if we're back on track and in tune with His will is, that that's when we find peace, we find joy, and we don't have to go to a substance to find those things. Exactly. Or to escape from the pain. Right, exactly. That's there. I like, see, the, the, the feedback to try to get us back in line, that's why people use drugs and alcohol, to, you know, to shut that up, you know, or to, to kind of like take it out of existence. I mean, there's two kinds of um, addictions, just chemical, where we actually change our state, and then there's uh, non-chemical, which is a behavior, you know, like uh, gambling or whatever. And so, uh, so we use alcohol and drugs to, and um, and behaviors to try to keep quiet the feedback that's trying to get us back on the track. Right. Okay. So uh, we can be addiction free. AA questions that. So the AA kind of modality is kind of. Um, yeah, maybe you can be addiction free, but if you go to enough meetings, if you do enough things, that you maybe can be addiction free. But of course, they say once an addict, always an addict. Uh, you say that once you're set free, you're set free. Exactly. Um, and we've talked before in the past where set free doesn't mean, okay, well, since I'm set free, I'll go have 20 drinks. Right. Because if I'm truly set free, why do I want the 20 drinks? Right. Right. Yeah. Okay, so uh, what I thought we'd do is kind of look at the 12 steps of AA because that's how they teach people out of recovery. And I think you and I both would agree there's some good principles in the 12 steps. Right. And, and, and out of it, how do we apply them in a, in, a, in a more fruitful way? So let's look at just step one. It says, we admitted we were powerless over alcohol. Their lives have become unmanageable. Do you believe that? Yes. Okay, so you actually believe that there comes a place if you're going to walk in victory... You have to realize you're powerless on your own. Right. And is that not biblical? That's true. Isn't that what what, what is taught? Right. That we, we, we're powerless if we, if we depend upon ourselves, that we're, we're going to be powerless. Yeah, we don't have the power, yeah. Okay, and their life becomes unmanageable. Most people that have addiction, especially to any kind of addiction for any length of time, life becomes totally unmanageable. Uh, what about the person that says, oh, I, I have control. I have willpower. Yeah, to a certain extent, yeah, we do, but not totally. I mean, can you stop your heart from beating? 
You know, yeah. not that I know of. <laughs> yeah, there's all kinds of things going on in this, in this thing, this created design thing, that um, uh, we don't have control over. So the idea, it's kind of like you know, you get in your car and you say, "Well, I could throw it into reverse and then we'll go forward." No, <laughs> yeah. or I could put the carburetor in the trunk and you know, the car still, no, it's not going to do it. So we have to recognize our body and our feelings and our in interior state as being designed things. And so when you operate, like I said, wonderful is what you feel when you, when you do the things you're made to do. See, So we don't have any choice. We don't have total freedom. You know, nobody has total freedom. So the, the free, freest that we can do is, um, is just to operate within the designs. Okay. Step number two, can you believe that a power greater than ourselves can restore us to sanity? Yeah. You say, I, I agree with that one absolutely completely. Sure. We need to set power outside of ourselves if we're going to get sane. Yeah, obviously if we didn't do it without the power, we need the power. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Okay, number three. Made a decision to turn our will and our lives over to the care of God as we understood Him. Now, the part that I know that you have to struggle with is the God we understood. Right. Now, we're, we're, we'll talk a little bit about but let's look at it. It says, made a decision to turn our will and lives over to the care of God. If it stopped there yeah. and it was the true God, you'd right. be at peace with that. That'd be fine. But it's as we understood him. Yeah, and why, I just, why don't you explain some why? Because they would say, hey, I, I've said, a doorknob is better to trust in it than you because a doorknob doesn't tell you to drink. Right. But a doorknob isn't going to be on much strength after a few more days. Right. You know, if, if we do it as we understood him, I understand why they did that because they, they don't want to exclude any religion or any uh, concept of God. But the problem is, um, if, if you do it as we understood him, then you make yourself God. So... That's not going to So work. then it can't work very well because you're the one that got yourself in the mess in the first place. Right. It's like, you know, walking up to our car and if the car broke, broke down, say, well, you know, I'll try to fix it as I understand it. No, you need the handbook. You need to know nuts and bolts what to do. Okay. And that's where the Bible comes in. And that's where the Bible comes in and that's where you need to have a God that actually knows how to fix you. Right. Because he made you. He made you. And obviously you can't fix yourself because why are you in the mess you're in? Yeah, that's, that's right. Okay, so... Uh, would you, would you agree that sometimes a stepping stone, there's some stepping stones to get to a place of acknowledging God? Yeah. And, 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 and you can live with the person who's on a, and so that a person stays on a spiritual journey. Were you not on that spiritual journey at one point in your life? Was I? Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah, and I, I experimented. I tried um, 20 different approaches to lifestyle and uh, whatever was popular in the culture. And, uh, and truth and problem solving. And uh, not till I hit number 20, which is the Bible, none, none of the other ones worked. Psychiatrists, psychologists, Eastern mysticism, you know, Scientology, you know, none of them worked. Because none of them was of the true God. And none of them was in line, yeah, that's right. And none of them was in, in harmony with the, our being. How we were supposed to be, operate then. Yeah, right. Okay, uh, number four says, made a searching and fearless moral inventory of ourselves. Now, I, I have a position that says, make a searching. That means you've got, you got to look for what's going on in your life. You have to look and see what, what, what's the good, what's the bad. A searching and fearless moral inventory. How do you do that without God? Okay, first off, okay, can, can you truly, if you don't know that God loves you and that God cares for you, that God has a plan for you, how many people really want to look at their life if there is no hope after you look at your life? Well, I guess people do have hope going into it. I mean, I had hope going into all those things that I did. But, um, yeah, it's, it's just kind of like, a, it's okay, though, I think, to do a moral inventory to say, okay, I want to get rid of this. Uh, I keep, I'm okay with this. I want to get rid of this. You know, I mean, when I first, my, my drummer told me to go to this shrink, Dr. Blue is his name, and uh, he's dead, so it's okay. Uh, you know, and he says he'll give you all the answers that you need, you know, on this life. And I, I go, okay, good. I have my list. Of, I did my moral inventory, and I know what's wrong. I just don't know what's right or how to fix it. So I went, I, I built it up, you know, and I wrote it all down. And uh, then I went to his office, you know, and I'm sitting there with him, and I'm going, I got my head down, and I'm going, and yeah, and I feel this, and I just all of a sudden here. <laughs> So, so much for the solution we get. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, what I look at is uh, I haven't met too many addicts that uh, are honest enough 
to look at everything in their life. Well, like you a said, it's like a stepping stone. Yeah. yeah. As long as they can get that started. And isn't these first steps, aren't those the stepping stones? They're, they're stepping stones to get us to, to a, n another place, and you have to start someplace. The problem is, is, is if they don't lead us to the God that has the answers, then we only can go so far. Right, and I think the reason why people uh, don't he get healed is because um, uh, they don't believe that the answer's there. They, they think that they've heard it all in the society, and, uh, and it didn't work for them. They may have tried a religion or whatever, and it didn't work for them, and now they've lost hope. They, so they tried not? religion. Uh, yeah. So yeah. So what do you think is the difference? Trying religion and having a relationship with Christ. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and here's the relationship. He's right there. And so if I'm just trying religion, I'm just trying to get spiritual, but I'm not connected to the power that brings that spirituality into my life. I'm not going to get very far. Is what you're saying? That can guide you, right? Yeah. You have to. Um, it either we're being guided by here, or out there, or God. See. So we really need to get a keen sense of God's voice to guide us. And, and your argument again is because he's the only one who knows how to get our body in tune. Right. And, you know, I mean, that, that's a starting point. You know, we walk through this world and this distraction and that distraction, this problem, that problem, what to do, what to do. But, you know, there's something more than this world, you know. And that's where God's concern is. He wants to prepare us for the thing after this world, see. So that's, that's, it's not just to fix our problems now. Is that sometimes why people relapse is because they're just trying to fix the problems now and so then they get comfortable because, hey, I'm not drinking, I'm not drugging now, I can hold down a job, everything's okay now. But is it? I don't think so. You know, like, like I said, you know, there's a, there's a higher purpose for why God made us, to prepare us for the after this life. You know, this didn't work, you know, so now you've got to go to Earth 2.0. And that's what's going to work. And so I don't think a person ever gets to what you just said. They have to they have to fool themselves because God's going to work on them to get them to uh, fulfill what they're supposed to fulfill here. Okay. All right. So then, uh, as I look here, the reason I talk about step four is because I know people who get stuck at step four and they don't go any further. And I, and the reason I'm going to bring next to step five says, admitted to God, to ourselves, to another human being, the exact nature of our wrongs. So if somebody gets through step four, and step five is admitted to God, well, what if you don't have a God? Yeah, as you understood him. Yeah, and then he's got to understand so him. you're just admitting it to yourself. <laughs> is this, is that, so do you, you, you feel that way then. If it's God that you understand yourself, then that's a God that you've created, right. and your only hope is in the God that you created, and how much hope is in a God that you created? Right. Because that God is you. Right. Is that, that's what you're saying. Right. Yeah, it, you just, uh, I know a lot of Christians who say, uh, it, they call it cafeteria Christians. You know, I'll take a little bit of this, but no, I'm not that. And, you know, so they, they, they censor what they don't like that God's, you know, but, but a person who really finds God, first of all, is sensitive to him right here. And, uh, and that's critical. Uh, but also that they believe in the Bible 100%. So they dive into the Bible, they don't, you know, negate part of it. Yeah, the, the whole thing is right. So let's talk about that for a minute to get a little bit of sidetrack from the steps. Is what you're saying then is a person who dives into the Bible and reads and says, well, it says that this here is how you should live and this works. So if it says this is how to live and it works, I'm going to live it and see if it doesn't work. Exactly. But somebody else reads it and says, it says that if you do this, it'll work. I question if it'll really work, so I'm not going to do it because I don't think it'll work. Is that is that what you're talking about? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, they, they can't. Or not, not just that, they have an aversion. To yeah, yeah, it goes, it goes a step further. So it's not only I don't think it works, I just don't like it, and I don't care if it works, I just don't want to do that, or, or, I, or I want to do that, whatever it may be. The, or the maybe my wife doesn't like it. Either. Yeah, yeah. So, so, so then uh, you said cafeteria Christians. So you're saying... That issue isn't just an addict trying to get clean issue who's struggling through a journey of trying to do it the right way. You're talking about people who are not even necessarily have had an addiction that call themselves Christians that are doing the exact same thing. And their life isn't really fulfilling them. And people look, an addict looks at that person and says, you tell me if I accept Jesus that life is going to be better and that things are going to turn around and I'm going to have this joy and peace. And I see that Christian, and they don't seem like they have a lot of joy and peace, so the Bible can't be true. You know, that's bad logic, but anyway, uh, yeah, because it's 
their personal experience, you know. And you know, and Jesus said, um, "Whoever says that they know me but doesn't do what I command is not is a liar, and the truth is not in them." You know. So yeah, there's a lot of people who say, "Oh yeah, they like Jesus." You know, they saw the movie Greatest Story Ever Told. And he's a good guy, and uh, <laughs> so so you said it's not logical. So I'll repeat it again, and then you talk about why it's not logical. Is uh, you tell me that if I really accept Jesus, he can set me free from addiction and I'll have a fruitful life and I can find peace and I can fulfill him and I can find why I'm here on this earth. I look at that Christian, they don't seem to have uh, that good of a relationship. They don't seem to be, their marriage is falling apart, this or that. Why is that illogical for that person to, to go down that road? Yeah, well, why judge the whole thing through a person? You have to judge it through God, which Jesus says, that's all. You know, you, you, you don't do it by somebody who's not good at it. Okay, so that means probably if I take an algebra class, it should be with a professor that knows algebra? Yeah. Uh, all right, so if, I, if I'm gonna take a class on Christianity, maybe I should go to the author of, of, of Jesus and, and God and how to, how to live. That's the whole thing. Okay, so then it says here, if you go back, it says, uh, number five, admit it to God, to ourselves, and to another human being the exact nature of our wrongs. And so this say that it is a the true God. And, it's, and so what that step is saying is go to God, admit to ourselves, and go to others about the exact nature of our wrongs. I would argue without the power of God, you can't get go to the exact nature of our wrongs. We're not going to get very specific. We're going to get generalities because there's shame, there's embarrassment, all those things. Do you believe that there's something healing about getting things out of the closet, getting things out in the open? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, that's the next step. But just like <laughs> <that's> the <laughs> next step. <laughs> and, and, and why do you think that's powerful? Well, because you know, either you're doing that or you're in denial. You're, you're either uh, admitting or you're running from. You know, I mean, a, a person it has it, it takes a, a certain degree of humility to say, "I'm off. I want to be on. I'm off is the first part. I want to be on is the second part." So how many want to be on but don't want to admit they're off? And how far do they go? Well, no. They don't go. That, that, that's where they get stuck, right? Yeah. So again, if somebody goes here to step five, because a lot of people say, well, none of the, the steps don't work and everything else. Well, I think they're biblical principles that are there. And just as much if you don't apply those principles, you don't apply the principles in the Bible, you can't say it, it isn't true, it doesn't work if you're not applying it. Right. And so uh, one of the things is, is when there's things that you don't admit to, those things you don't get out, then those are, aren't those are the things that the devil kind of still brings up to you, shames you, guilts you. Um, you're the only one that's ever done that. You're the only one that's been that evil. You're the only one that's that bad. And then I'm an island to myself and I'm just no good human being. And you start to open up and you have a mentor and you say, man, I hate to, I hate to just tell you this, but man, you know, it says exactly the nature of your wrongs. Man, I stole from mom 10 times. And then you turn around and say, well, I stole from mom 20 times. Right. All of a sudden, that person realizes, oh, we're all sinners. Right. They need a savior. Right. Which is some hope in that, right? That's true. That's true. Okay. Uh, so, again, it, what if we skip some of these steps? We just bounce around wherever we want to pick, right? So, you know what? I, I'm not going to turn my life over to God, but I'm going to do a, a, a search and inventory. What well, goes a search and inventory if you don't turn your life over to God? Right. Yeah, there's got to be a. I, and you have to believe that God's perfect, you know. There's a, you have, there's a higher standard. Whereas, you know, people going through the world, what is their higher standard? Is it the society? Is it the culture? Is it their parents? Well, I, I think of when you go to counselors and, and then you find out that counselors are living absolutely immoral lives and you're trusting that counselor who absolutely lives an immoral life, you're looking to him for some answers. Right. But he hasn't been able to find the victory in his own life. No, I, I went to a lot of shrinks and nothing. You know, they didn't know what they were, because uh, they were, you know, they weren't perfect themselves. Why go to something that's imperfect when you can go to the perfect? Right, right. And that doesn't mean not necessarily get counseling and get help. It just means your final source has to be God. Right. Okay, uh, number uh, six is we're entirely ready to have God remove all these defects of character. So it's saying, I, I acknowledge that there's defects of character. I turn it over to God. To a place that I say, God, now you got you got to fix me. Well, yeah, I think God's going to turn back around and say, 
okay, well then do this. <laughs> you know, I'm not going to fix you. You're going to you're gonna have to fix yourself. So, the, so just talk about that because here's here's a falsehood that Christianity does a lot of times, especially street evangelists. They walk up to the, the drug addict and they turn around, just accept Jesus, and everything's going to be fixed. He's going to take care of everything. Your life's going to be perfect. It's all going to be fixed. Just say this prayer now, and you're and you're going to have salvation. And then all of a sudden, you're going to be okay. I think you don't believe that. No, you have to give them the instructions. Okay, well, you know, if you're going to turn yourself over to God, well, here's God's book on how to fix yourself. You know, it's that simple. But it just that's one thing I have a problem with AA. It's nebulous when it comes to God. Whereas, you know, if you go to a mechanic and he doesn't know the, uh, the handbook on how to fix the car, what good is that? Right, right. And so that's the biggest thing with it, with not, not necessarily as the steps as much as how the steps are applied in AA and the concept of the God thing, is that they're still leaving a person pretty much on their own because they're not going to the, the, the almighty, powerful God who can set them free. Right. And, you know, they're doing this constant affirmation that's bad, negative affirmation. Hi, my name's Dennis, and I'm an alcoholic, and, you know, no, you know, hi, my name's Dennis, and I'm through with that, you know, <laughs> you know, and so, and the reason why I'm through with it is because I did what God said in the Bible, and I feel better, and all the bad feelings went away, and I have no weakness for any kind of, uh, Okay, so I did what the Bible said, so we have to finish up here, uh, that what you're saying then is that for a person to be addiction free, a person apply the steps, we just have to be talking about the steps, is one, they have to do the exact steps exactly what they are. You don't get to change them up. You don't get to say, well, I'll do half of that. I'll do part of that. You have to have the true God. And there has to be a place that you're willing to say, okay, if I pick up my Bible today and I read it and the Holy Spirit speaks, people maybe not understand that at first, but something in me says, Ouch, that's about me. That's talking about me. Now, what's the solution? It says, if you repent, then. So then I read that and I say, okay, I need to repent. It says, for this to happen, I need to repent. <clears throat> okay, I don't know what repentance is. I make a phone call. So tell me what repentance is. I'm going to find out what it means to repent. I'm going to, if I don't understand, I'm going to find somebody that does because this does have the answers. And the only way I'm going to get free is I have to go to where the answer's at. That, that's your belief system. Exactly. And if a person does that, they're going to see fruitfulness that comes from that. Right. That's right. Get, well, guaranteed. That's, that's the science thing. You know, that's, uh, you know, you do, try this, if it work, if, and then if this is the result, and it's good, boom. It, or if you do this, what the world says, and this is the result, bad. See? So you, you can be very scientific about it. Well, this has been Darius Hope TV. I've had Dennis Marcelino with me. We have been talking about the 12 steps of AA. I think we went through about uh, six of those steps. We are going to talk also about the, the scientific proof that there's a God and how does that apply to addiction. We're going to find ways to give you victory. If you want to see victory in your life, Dennis and I both believe that you have victory through Jesus Christ, that He is the answer, He is the solution, that no matter what your addiction is, no matter what... We, we believe it, it's not even addicted, just dysfunctional. Right. Just have dysfunctional things in your life. And there's a lot of dysfunctional people whether they're an addict or not. Right. In fact, the world's full of yeah. dysfunctional people. One hundred percent. Yeah. Actually. Yeah. And actually, I think me and you can be included that at times. Yes. And so, out of it is that if you have areas in your life that maybe is an addiction, but you just know that you're making wrong decisions, bad decisions, you're not seeing fruitfulness in your life. That we believe that Jesus Christ is the answer. And, and uh, just as the show is ending, we're going to be letting you know how you can accept Jesus Christ into your life how you can turn your life around. If you're struggling with the past, we're going to let you know how you can move beyond the past also. Thank you for watching today. We'll be back with you next week. Go to Dennis's website, addictionfreeforever.com. Dennis has his book there and workbook. All the information you need to become addiction-free is there. Addictionfreeforever.com. Are you struggling with moving beyond the past? Are you having a hard time to forgive others, to forgive yourself? Or maybe even to forgive God. Well, Seattle Open Door Church has a series that we're doing called Moving Beyond the Past. So here's some of the sessions we'll be covering. What is healing past hurts? Who needs healing? The prodigal son, God's forgiveness. Face-to-face -face encounter with God, the power of the cross. Forgiveness and inner healing. Inner vows and bitter root judgments. Closing open doors. Breaking every curse. Breaking every deception 
and being filled with the Holy Spirit. If you keep track with all of that we share, you will certainly live a victorious, overcoming life. And I want to let you know that you can live a victorious, overcoming life and your deserts can be turned into glorious gardens. If you want to learn more, go to our website, sodc.tv forward slash moving beyond. That's sodc.tv forward slash moving beyond. We'll have the curriculum there. We will have the videotape of each session. So you'll be able to follow right along with us, even if you're not at our church service. Yes, you can move beyond the past. Yes, you can live a victorious life. Yes, your desert places can turn into glorious gardens for others to be able to receive the fullness of victory for their own lives because of what God's done in your This is Pastor Rich. Do you need to know Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior? Jesus said, Behold, I stand at the door and knock, and if anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in. Romans 10, 13 says, Whoever calls upon the name of the Lord will be saved. John 1, 7 says, You must be born again. Acts 16, 31 says, Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. And Matthew 1, 15 says, Repent you and believe the gospel. Will you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior today? If you want to get more information, you can always go to our website to learn how to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. You can go to thereishopetv.org. That's thereishopetv.org. And we have information on frequently asked questions about Christianity. We let you know step by step how to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. I encourage you to go to thereishopetv.org. That is thereishopetv.org. Also, I want to let you know, if you would like to talk to me personally, you can always give me a call toll-free anytime, 1-866-1-GOD. You have been listening to There Is Hope with Pastor Richard Dover. Through Jesus Christ, we can live a victorious life. Seattle Open Door Church, located in Burien, committed to loving God, loving people, and loving life. Seattle Open Door Church wants you to know that regardless of where you've been or what you've done, God loves you. Their doors are open to anyone and everyone. Their services are Sunday mornings at 11. Seattle Open Door Church is located at 625 Southwest 149th Street in Burien, next to the Southwest Courthouse. So Seattle Open Door Church, our vision is loving God, loving people, loving life. Now that's a vision for a church, to love God, to love people, love life. Let me tell you something. That if you love God and love people, you will love life. You know why some people don't love life? They don't love God or they don't love people. If you don't love God or you don't love people, you won't love life. Let me tell you something else. When you love life, you will love people and you will love God. It goes both ways. And out of it, if you have a love and a passion for God, and you say, God, I just love you with all my heart. Thank you, Jesus. So You've done so much for me. Lord, I just love you. Lord, what can I do for you? That's what happens when you have true love. You, you know what God is going to answer? Love people.